Hi, and uh, we're back after a couple of months break. Uh, we had some real life uh, things that needed to take my attention for a while, but we're back in the series. And to kind of ease back into the series, uh, we're going to talk about some of the changes between 5.1 and 5.3 as you migrate your project um, from 5.1 to 5.3. If you started the series, the series started in 5.1. Um, if you started in 5.3, you, you may notice some differences in the videos relative to what's happening in your editor, and hopefully this will help explain that. If you've migrated, this should help you walk through the steps. Um, and I'll try to do this in small chunks so you can go right to the appropriate video. Uh, so this one is on changes to the enhanced input system and the key bindings. Uh, so in 5.3, they did a bit of an overhaul in the enhanced input system, and that's caused a few things to break in our game and so we're going to talk about those changes here and then make those changes so that our game is functioning uh, as we would like it to. so the way you know this is happening in your in your game is if you pull up your game settings and you go to your mouse and keyboard and look at the list of key bindings you'll note that the lyra standard uh, key bindings are there because lyra has adjusted their code accordingly to the new 5.3 uh, design but any of the key bindings that you had added in 5.1 uh, are no longer shown in the screen. So this is the indicator of what is going on and that you need to go make some changes. So you're not going to get a compile error. It's going to run fine. Uh, the really only indication that you've got an issue is that you don't see them in the settings. Even uh, pressing the keys in game will work fine as well. So what have they changed? They basically simplified the data assets that are needed for the enhanced input system. Um, if you look at the 5.1 structure on the left, uh, you'll note that the input mappings and the player mappables um, were duplicated based on platform. And so you had one for gamepad, one for keyboard and mouse. Um, by duplicating the, uh, the assets, the yellow assets here, that required you to duplicate the playable mappable assets. And then you basically had two rows uh, in your uh, action set. So what they did is they made some changes and adjustments. Um, if you think about these in two flows, right, the bottom flow here is I have an action. I have um, a definition, a uh, Lyra input configuration that says when I press that action, I want you to fire uh, a gameplay uh, tag or event. That largely hasn't changed. Um, and that's sort of platform independent, which means no matter which platform I'm at, whenever this action is triggered, regardless of how it was triggered, I want the same thing to occur. So the bottom half of this, which is platform independent, hasn't changed. Those, those assets are the same, um, and you basically have them configured the same way. The top, which is platform dependent, um, has been simplified. Um, and this is really, you know, what do you do as a player to trigger that action, right? On a gamepad, you press a button. On a keyboard, you press a different button. And so they've simplified that structure. And what it basically means, and I'll just give you a quick cheat sheet here on the next slide, is that the player mappable input configuration, or what we knew as PMI, uh, has been depreciated. It still sits in the engine, will still compile, uh, still shows up in your editor, uh, but it's been depreciated. And the Lyra code has been updated to no longer reference uh, that asset. In the Lyra action set, um, basically they've, or we will be removing our input configuration, which is where the PMI asset was referenced. And we will be adding a new input mapping, which is where we add our IMC. Um, and basically there's a switch in that input mapping that you can toggle on and off, whether you want that input mapping to show up in your settings view. Uh, which is handy if you've got some input mappings that you don't want to be remapped um, or uh, if you do want to have them remapped. And then, as I said earlier, there's no changes to the bindings. Your Lyra input config is still exactly the same as it was. So let's jump into the editor and uh, let's make those changes. We'll see it kind of functioning in a variety of different fashions. Okay, so we're up and running in our editor. And um, I've created a couple of favorites just to help me bounce around. I'm working inside our abilities core. And inside abilities core, I have two sets of actions. I have our inventory actions, which allow us to toggle our inventory, 
pick up items in the world, uh, as well as a bunch of inventory actions that are, are not key binding, such as dropping, deleting, et cetera. And then I have our ability system and our ability system has our slots uh, where we can slot an ability and then we can trigger an ability. So at this moment in the video, I fixed the inventory system, but I have not yet fixed the ability system. And so using the video, I can help you guys walk through that. So if you look at our actions uh, and we'll go into the inventory and we'll go into toggle inventory. Uh, all of this is basically the same and should look just fine coming out of 5.1. The only new added thing that I could tell is this player mappable key settings is here. And you might be tempted to change that from none to either Lyra playable mapping or uh, player mappable key settings. As I looked at the Lyra code, they've left this at none. So my recommendation is you leave these at none for now, get your game functioning again, and then you can experiment with different configurations to see, see if it's easier for you. But at this point, you shouldn't have to touch any of the input actions. They should be fine. I just double check that this says none. All right, then in the, we're gonna skip that one for a minute. In the mappings, um, you used to have two mappings, one for gamepad, one for keyboard and mouse. You'll now end up with one mapping. And in that one mapping, uh, you'll have your actions here and your keys. So I have the F key or I have the gamepad button. Right. So in one input mapping now, you will have both your keyboard and your gamepad. Something to note is that on the keyboard, the settings behavior should be set to override. And then player mappable settings is set here as the mapping settings. I'll just expand that so I don't forget. However, on the gamepad uh, you can say ignore settings and basically not allow the player to remap the buttons so in my case the right button will always be the right button and there's no mapping in the ui for someone to change the gamepad however on the keyboard we're going to say override settings use playable mapping settings and this is a unique name so i just have interact mine what the display name is and what the category is. Now I've noticed that if you leave the category blank, it doesn't show up. So what you wanna do is make sure that you have a category and that if you have multiple, um, like we do here, uh, hold on, toggle inventory, I playable mapping, that you type these the same or else it will create two separate categories. But leaving it blank, it won't show up on the screen not typing them the same, you'll have multiple categories. So in this case, I'll have one category with two uh, keys in it, the F key to interact in the world, the I key to toggle the inventory. Then in the, in the action set, so here in your experience action set, you're basically going to have your uh, key bindings, which is your, uh, your basically your association of the action key to the gameplay tag or event that fires in the system. Now that should be unchanged. When you come in, you will see input configuration. You're going to remove that because that's where the PMI, the player mappables are, and you'll add this input mapping. And in the input mapping, you'll define your singular uh, input mapping config. And then you have this switch here, which allows you to toggle on and off whether or not this particular input mapping is going to be shown in the, uh, in the sentence. And so right now I have it off. And you'll see that when I play and I hit escape, I go to my keyboard, I have my standard Lyra but nothing for the inventory system. If I change that back on, make sure I save it. Now you'll see that I have the inventory category and I have the two interact and toggle with F and I as their default 
settings. So that's how it's configured properly. In order to do that quickly, um, obviously you go into your other folders, check that these are all set to none. Go to probably the fastest one is to go to your mappings. And so here where I have uh, gamepad and keyboard, I'm just gonna go ahead and rename this without keyboard. And then I'll need to go in here and add um, each of the, um, so you can delete that one, add another one, change it to your gamepad. I'm not gonna do all of these and assign a button for my ability slots, which I have no idea. So let's go thumb it up. And in this case, I'm going to um, ignore settings for that one. And on my key, I'm going to say override to player mappable settings. That's good. And that's good. It's my primary ability. And then I have to add a category now called abilities. I'm going to copy that. And so I'm going to go down here. I'm basically deleting the second one. Don't think you need it anymore. Expanding that, making a and I'm just going to do this for the abilities because that's probably good enough for this test. And expand that. And I don't need confirm cancel. I'll, I'll, I'll adjust those later. So now I have basically set the player mappable in my configuration settings. Again, adding all the different platforms here as necessary. I've only done it for one. I've renamed that to abilities. Then what I'm going to do is quickly go into the action set, which is under my game. I go into my action set. And here you see I have my config and my bindings. My bindings stay the same. My config, which used to have this PMI, I'm basically just going to delete that. So I always get these wrong. I'm going to delete this index the config. So I have bindings and abilities. I'm going to add and I'm going to add the mapping. Add a mapping. Oh, there it is, abilities. And I'm going to make sure that this is checked. So if I did that right, I can now for cleanliness should be able to delete these. Yes, because they're no longer referenced. And I should be able to delete this gamepad one. Now you might want to go in and make sure you copied over the configuration for all the gamepads. I did not. And I'm down to one for each of these. And if I play the game here, go to my options, I have standard and I have inventory and my three abilities that we configured. So that's uh, functioning and running again. You'll have to go through and do that to any action sets that you have defined uh, beyond the Lyra game, but hopefully that's helpful and, uh, and everyone can kind of continue with their project. Uh, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment and we'll try to get back into this uh, now that we're back and recording again. Thanks a lot.